Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It. We're in week 13. Don't worry if you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series. I will link a playlist at the top of the screen so that you can go back and catch up on anything you have missed. We're going to be working on a pieced panel this week. And so I've got my yellow floral that we used a couple of weeks ago with our bird houses. And I've got my pale blue fabric at the top and I've just stitched these together. You will need a piece of fabric that is 20 centimetres wide and 13 centimetres deep for the top and for the bottom you need to cut a piece that is 20 centimetres wide by 9 centimetres deep and that will give you a 1 centimetre seam allowance in the middle that will give you a finished panel size of 20 by 20 centimetres. We explored this technique back in week three and I will link that video at the top of the screen so that you can go back and refresh your memory on how to cut pieces to size and how to join them together. I've just pressed open the seam at the back and ironed it flat. I've also got a selection of fabrics so I've got some shades of green here and I've got a couple of pieces of brown as well. I've got some bondweb and I've also got some green and brown threads. So I've got my light green, which is anchor 255, my mid green, which is anchor 258. I've got my very dark green, which is anchor 683. And then I've got a mid brown, which is 480, and a darker brown, which is 380. I may add some more colours in, but I think that probably will cover what we're doing this week. I've also got my embroidery scissors and some paper scissors because we're using Bondweb. And I've got a selection of marking tools handy because I'm going to need some temporary markers and some permanent ones. I've got some pins just off camera and my iron as well. And there is a template for this week's panel. We're going to be making some trees. You can get this from our website. I'll put the address at the bottom of the screen and I'll also put a direct link in the description below. This costs £1 to download and it's just a cost to help me cover making these videos and keep our channel running. So that's available for you if you're not confident about drawing your trees yourself. I'm going to start off by tracing my design onto my patched panel and I want to do this to help me position my pieces when it comes to it and I am going to be using Bondweb so I don't want to be erasing my lines every time I add anything so I'm going to use my water erase pen. We haven't used this for a a little while but this is ink that is water soluble so you just spritz it with a little bit of water and the ink will vanish but it will stay while I'm using an iron so I'm just going to sketch around the outside of the tree canopies at the top here and I'm going to do the top and bottom of the trunks as it turned out doing the bottom of the trunks is enough really because you were going to be covering over those top parts I just want enough so that I know where to place the pieces once I've cut out the shapes so I've just put my block to one side and now I'm going to work on my bonder web and we're going to do this with the trunks. Now when we use bonder web there is a glue side and a paper side and what we're going to do is attach the glue side to the fabric and then flip over the pieces and iron them onto their onto our backing piece and so that means that everything we do is going to be reversed so I'm going to flip over my template and because I'm using my light box I can see through it perfectly and so what I'm going to do is now trace the reverse of each shape. Now I'm storing up a mistake here because I immediately forgot that I was working on the reverse and I've marked tree number three as tree number one and tree number one as tree number three because I've gone from left to right so don't make that mistake it's going to change how I use my trunks later so just watch out for the mistake. Now I'm also going to trace around my tree canopies onto some scrap paper this is just a little bit of drawing paper here and we're going to use some paper piecing this week so I'm just drawing around and where the trunk is I'm just joining up 
the lines to make a flat bottom to the tree canopy and this time I am marking them correctly so the left hand tree I've just put a little number one in and the middle tree is number two and the right hand tree is number three and I'm just cutting those out with my paper scissors. So that's all the tracing I'm going to need. I'm just going to work first of all on the tree canopies. So I've got my three paper shapes here and I thought I would do the most complicated one because if you can master this one the other two are relatively easy. So I want to save my pattern fabric for the centre. I'm going to use this bright green for the tree on the right. So I want to just place my paper pencil side down because this is going to be the back of the tree we're going to flip it over and I just want to allow some border around and when I'm doing paper piecing I do find it easier to put a couple of cross stitches through the paper and onto the fabric before I start turning my edges because that avoids the paper slipping and moving and keeps your border even all the way around. So I've just put a little cross in there. It doesn't look like a cross on this side, but it does on the on the what will be the front. And I'm just going to put another cross at the bottom end just to hold that paper stable while I'm working with it. You'll notice that I'm using a dark coloured thread, that's because we're going to remove these and I want to be able to see it easily. So I've just got some black machine cotton here. This is some temporary stitching, it's not going to be there at the end, so you can use any colour that stands out. So now I'm going to cut around my paper former, leaving a border of almost a centimetre, not quite a centimetre, but just leaving that space to allow me to turn over the edges and I want to keep it fairly even and I've just cut that all the way around and so now I'm going to use the paper to form the shape of the tree into my fabric so I've got my black machine cotton again I've just knotted the end and I've brought the needle through so that the knot is going to end up on the right side of the fabric because we're going to cut it off we want to be able to have access to that knot and I'm keeping that fabric pulled tight down over the edge of the paper and I'm just putting in some tacking stitches along that bottom flat edge. Now I've reached the start of the curve and I'm going to work around that curve by making a series of pleats in my fabric. So I'm just folding over the edge there so that it overlaps what's gone before and then I'm putting the stitch in in a way that is going to hold that pleat in place. So just keep doing these little pleats all around that curve so that I'm easing the fabric into the shape of the paper. It's good to use a fairly robust paper. The paper is there to guide the fabric and you've got an edge to work around there that helps you keep your shape nice and tight. So you can see every time I do a little pleat I'm taking my needle through the pleat and holding it in place with a little stitch. Now we've got to an internal corner here where I've got this cloud shape on this tree you can see how that curved edge has gone really smooth there but now we need to make our fabric go in a different direction so what I'm going to do is just put a little snip through the border of the fabric into that internal corner and then I can use my thumbnails there to just pull the fabric in really tight up to the paper and put a stitch in. Now, You'll see when I stitch the other side down that we've got to do this to allow the fabric to move apart. On either side of that internal corner, the fabric will want to go in two different directions. So on this side, it will want to pull in this direction. And on this side, it will want to pull away again in the opposite direction. You'll see it better once I've stitched 
this down so I'm going to again fold the edge over on the other side of that corner and put a little stitch in place I'm just checking there that it's really tightly pulled around the paper and I put a little stitch in there and you can see there that what we've got is a little notch that's being created and that's because of that corner the fabric taking the shape of the corner so that's why we put a little slit in our fabric a little snip so that it can move so that's how to do a concave and a convex curve there so i'm just going to carry on all around the outside of the shape now snipping into the internal corners and pleating to get the curves that are going outwards and I'm just going to work all the way back round to the start and make sure that I finish my thread so that the knot is on the surface of the fabric. So there you can see I've got those nice smooth curves, tight internal corners and everything is working as it should. So I've formed the other tree shapes in the same way and now I'm just pressing them to set those folds in place and set the shape and then once I've pressed them I can take out the crosses at the at the centre because we don't need those anymore. I'm leaving in the stitching around the outside though for now. I've got a single strand of green thread here and I'm just lining up my shapes with the outlines that I drew onto my backing panel at the very beginning and I'm just going to pin those in place so just to be clear the paper is still in at this point and I'm going to start stitching down my tree using an applique stitch so I've brought my needle up through both the backing fabric and the tree shape and I'm taking it back down tucked in right up against the edge of the tree shape through just the backing fabric so this is just an applique stitch like we've used before and I'm just making tiny stitches around the outside you can see I'm using a hooking motion there so I'm just hooking up through both layers and going back down through one and we want to keep our stitches really small and even it's possible to feel with the tip of your needle the part of the fabric that is just fabric and not paper and you can stitch down the edge of your shape without actually stitching through the paper. We've got a bit of space left now before I close up the outside edge of that tree shape and so I'm going to take out my tacking stitches now because we put our knots on the right side of our shape they're really easy to snip off and then I can just lift out those tacking stitches by pulling them out with my needle and now I can use that space that's left to lift up the shape and I'm just going to hook the paper out and remove it and because we've pressed our shapes that fold at the edge is going to stay in place and now I can just work around the outside edge and close up the gap in exactly the same way using my little tiny applique stitches. So when I'm back to the beginning I just take my thread through to the back and I can secure my thread I'm just using a quilter's knot here and then I can snip that off and that's my first tree in place so I'm going to put in the other two canopies and then we'll come back and look at the next stage okay so I've stitched down my tree canopies now and so it's time to work on the trunks and I've got my bonder web here that we outlined earlier I'm just going to cut these down separately and trim off any excess just to save wasting fabric so I've got this berry pattern brown fabric and I'm going to use that for the two tree trunks on either side so I'm just laying my tree trunk shapes onto the back of the fabric so I'm working on the back of the fabric here and with the glue side down and I'm just going to press my iron onto that for about 10 seconds that melts the glue and fuses the bonder web 
to the fabric and then I'm using the same technique to attach the other tree trunk shapes to the fabric as well. So let's work on this central one. I'm now going to take my paper scissors and cut a more precise outline. So I'm just cutting around the edges. So until we have the bonder web attached to the fabric, we only ever cut out loosely and then we can use our pencil lines to make sure that there's glue right to the very edge of the shape. Now because I'm marked in where the bottom of the trunk reaches, I can attach that tree trunk in exactly the right place. I'm just laying it on to my backing panel there and this time the glue side is down so I've got the right side of the fabric up and I'm just holding my iron in place for about 10 seconds again which remelts the glue and fuses it onto the backing fabric. So this is where it all goes wrong because I mislabeled my tree trunks. So this is actually the tree trunk that should go on the left hand tree but I've marked it as number three so I'm going to put it on the right which is a little bit too small. And then this one should be tree number three, but I've marked it as tree number one. And so I'm going to put that on the left and it's going to be clearly too big. <laughs> I just adjusted where the bottom of the tree trunk started and it's OK. So these two should be the other way around. I think it would have looked better, but I, I, once you've stuck bond web down, there's no removing it. It will release over time, but initially it's not going to come off. So I thought we could add some stitching to the tree and I've threaded up two strands of my lightest green here and I thought we could do some leaf shapes using a chain stitch. So we've used chain stitch a lot before. I've brought the thread through, looped it round and I'm going to take my needle back down the same hole where the thread came out and then I'm going to bring my needle back through making sure it passes inside that loop and then I just put a little anchor stitch at the end. I'm doing a little stalk out of the end of the chain stitch to form a leaf shape and I'm just going to repeat that all over the green tree canopy on the left there making little loops and adding a little anchor stitch at the end and I'm going to try and vary the directions, keep it quite random just to add some texture to the surface of that tree canopy. So again, we bring our needle through to the surface of the fabric, loop round and go back down the same hole and then bring our needle back up inside the loop that we've made and then make a little anchor stitch hopping over the edge of the loop and that holds the loop in place. So that's my first tree. I've now got two strands of my mid green here and I thought we could add a different type of stitch here. I'm going to use some detached fly stitches. So this is made in a similar way to a chain stitch but we're just going to, instead of going down the same hole where the thread came up, we're going to open out the top of the stitch. So I've got about half a centimetre there between where the thread came out and where it went back down. I've got my loop and I'm going to bring my needle up a little way down inside that loop and that pulls my thread into a V shape and then just like before I've put a little anchor stitch to hold that V in place. So again out, down, just slightly away from where the thread came out, bring my needle up inside the loop and then take it back down on the other side of the loop so that I've got a little anchor stitch there. And again, I'm going to vary the directions of these, keep it nice and random, just to add some texture and a little bit of interest to that flat green space. So I'm just going to work lots of detached fly stitches all over this tree. You can use whatever stitches you like. There's lots of different ways that you could do this. I just quite like a graphic kind of illustrative approach. So that's why I'm using these quite geometric stitches. 
So for this tree, I've got two strands of my darkest green here, and I thought we could do a pistol stitch. And a pistol stitch is essentially a French knot. So I'm going to wrap the thread around my needle twice, and then instead of going back down where the thread came out, I'm going to take my needle away a little bit and take my thread back down a little distance away. And that puts a French knot at the end of a little stalk. So again, create a French knot, but rather than going down in the same hole, you move your needle a little bit further away. I didn't go particularly slowly when I was filming this, so I will put a tutorial at the top of the screen if you want to have a closer, slower demonstration of pistol stitches and you can go and check that out and learn how to do them if it's not clear from what I'm doing here. So once again I'm going to fill that green space with lots of pistol stitches going in lots of different directions and it will just add a little bit of interest to the surface of my tree. So I've got my three trees stitched and I thought I would add something to the background. I think it's looking a bit flat. So I've got my darkest green here, again two strands, and I thought we could add some of our canter stitching just like we did when we did our sunflower panel back in week four. And so I've just gone just below that seam line where the two backing fabrics join and I'm just going to go along that seam line in a running stitch right along that top edge of the yellow section. I'm trying to keep my stitches even and the spaces between the stitches smaller than the stitches themselves and when I get to a tree trunk I'm just going to hop across the back and out the other side of it and then carry on as if nothing happened. So I'm just going to make a line of running stitches in that dark green all along the edge just below the seam line. This was me just trying something out to see how it worked and hopefully you'll see in a moment it has quite a magical effect because it makes the background look like it's heading into the distance. You don't quite get it yet. I've now got my mid green thread and I'm going to do exactly the same again. So I'm going along just below that first line of stitching. I'm trying to match up my stitches here. So again, line of running stitch right along the back edge in that mid green. And now I've got my lightest green and I'm going to add a third row of stitches. So again, trying to match up the stitches so that they sit against each other and trying to keep them as even and neat as I possibly can. And hopefully you can see now, I don't know whether it's because the colour gets darker as it goes further away, but it does look like that background now is receding into the distance and the trees are sitting forward. Now because we've just bond a web down our trunks I want to make sure that they stay in place indefinitely and so I'm just going to add a line of running stitches just inside the trunk shape around the edge and I've just got two strands of my darkest brown here and I'm just going to work my way all around the outside edge of the tree trunk up into the branches almost like an outline but just inside that brown fabric so that I'm keeping it in place. This will make sure that if the bond web does fail over time with washing, the pieces won't ever fall off because they're held in place with stitches. I'm going to do this on all three trunks. So the last finishing touch, I was thinking it was looking a little bit static and I wanted to add a little bit of movement and I thought the easiest way to do that would be to add some birds. So I'm going to use exactly the same stitch that I used on that right hand tree, a detached chain stitch. I've got a single strand of my darkest green. It seems like a strange colour to use but it's less harsh than black. And I'm going to add three little birds flying in the sky over on the left. And because I like working in odd numbers, I'm going to put another couple over on the right. 
I don't want a trailing thread though because it is very dark colour and will probably show through the blue so I'm just going to finish off my thread there on the left and then restart it to stitch over on the right and hopefully you can already see it just adds a little bit of movement into the scene and stops it looking quite so static it just seems to bring it to life so I really liked the effect that these little birds had on this panel So again, I'm just going to finish off my thread on the back and that's our panel complete. I've just given the panel a little bit of a press to make sure it's flat, but that's our finished panel for this week. There were moments where I really wasn't sure about this panel, but I think it's come together really nicely. I'm, I do quite like this. It's one of my favourites. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm really looking forward to seeing your variations of our tree panel. Do share your own versions at hashtag FSH23quilt and that way we can see them all together. So I hope you've enjoyed stitching along with this one this week. If you have enjoyed it, I will link a similar video down here and I'll put a video up here that's best for you. If you'd like to subscribe, we'd be delighted to have you as part of our little community. Do just click on the logo down here. It makes it really easy for you. Have a great week. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.